Good morning friends. Welcome to Sharad Chandra IAS Academy Daily Current Affairs Analysis for the date of 2nd May 2022. The topics which we are going to discuss today are the first one GST collection has reached all time high. Second topic is about hate speech in India. Third topic is wheat cultivation in India. Fourth is about a port portable device which converts sea water into a drinking water. Fifth one is about the Echo Adventure Tourism Park which is constructed in Delhi. So the first topic of the day that is GST collection reached all time high. So the context of the news is in April 2022 India saw 1.68 lakh crore collection in the goods and services tax which has been introduced in 2017. So, through the first 101st constitutional amendment act we know that the goods and services tax has been introduced in india okay so by replacing so many indirect taxes now this year that is by the april 2022 the gst collection has reached 1.68 lakh crore this is highest this is highest till now after the introduction of gst in india 1.6 lakh crore collection is the highest as of now so what were the causes the reason the causes are one thing is the efficient measures taken by the income uh, yeah tax departments efficient measures taken by the tax departments by particularly acting against the phony billers okay that is fake billers fake bills fake bill scams have recently recently been exposed so many fake bills fake bill scams have recently been exposed in India in Gujarat in Uttar Pradesh so in several other areas in Delhi so uh, taking due measures in order to control this type of fake bills also resulted in high amount of taxation means more hand more uh, than like hundreds of crores hundreds of crores even thousands of crores have been uh, evaded by these fake billers next also the rationalization of the inverted duty structure so if you see what is this inverted duty structure like it is a uh, uh, inverted duty structure means if you see gst is imposed if suppose you have a company if this is a company you will get inputs okay you will get inputs so on one side you will get inputs and you will manufacture something you will use that inputs and manufacture something and you will send the output to the market okay so you will get the input that is raw materials to manufacture whatever your output is and you will send that output that production into the market now gst is laid down at two stages you will okay gst is laid down in two two stages so the rate of tax if the rate of tax on inputs generally it is expected that year year the tax is more so here the g goods are sorry. so for this good the tax is more at output level less at input level because the cost of input is low the cost of output is high but if suppose this process reverses that means the cost on the inputs is more than the cost I mean tax on the output that is the tax on input is more than the tax on output then that is known as inverted duty structure okay so inverted tax structure or inverted duty structure is Ta more tax on inputs than the outputs right rate of tax on inputs is higher than the rate of tax on output or the finished good okay this is known as inverted duty structure now gst council has recently going to uh, implemented rationalization in this process and as far as possible try to avoid it, such inverted duty structures wherever wherever possible so and at the same time domestic consumption also increased why because after covid 19 the economy is in the recovery stage so the consumption domestically in, in the in our country has also increased because of the economic recovery post covid 19 lockdown situation now and at the same time in february also eway bills have created a good amount like um, 6.91 crores when compared to the 6.8 crores in the month earlier that is so if you see from the january even though you know that the um, so in January it is 6.88 crores but in February it is 6.91 crores so indicating rapid recovery of the corporate activity so with all this like the good amount of corporate activity increasing the daily consumption 
and uh, rationalization of the inverted duty structure and also concentrating on the fake billers phony billers so all these resulted in the increase of the gst collection so yeah if you see what is the goods and services tax so more important for prelims so 101st constitution amendment introduced which is uh, which was passed in 2016 and enacted gst so the target was one nation one tax so one nation one tax and at, at the same time it consumed it in place of so many indirect taxes in place of so many indirect taxes the gst has been introduced as a single tax like the indirect taxes like vat service tax luxury tax all such taxes have been subsumed under gst so so this is essentially a consumption tax do you remember that is essentially a consumption tax when you are a consumer you consume you consume something then you pay the gst okay so so it is also uh, this is also reduces this the cascading effect and double tax double taxation double taxation means if you pay a tax on a same item at different stages cascading effect also means cascading means the tax keeps on increasing level to level in its hierarchy for example from production level from raw material level to the production level to the uh, distributor level to the wholesaler level to the retailer level so it so if the goods and services transfer from one level to the other level particularly goods transfer from one level to the other level then the amount of tax increases and this cascading effect will increase the burden on the final consumer so that's the reason why the to uh, to deal with the negative effects of the cascading effect and also to avoid the double taxation that is taxing the same item in the two stages so and also for them to avoid the confusion about the multiplicity of the taxation means no means more number of taxes will create unnecessary confusions and creates room for more evasions so that's why all many taxes replaced by single tax and again different taxes have been classified into different types so again confusion that's the reason why gst has been introduced in place of different amount different number of taxes having different different slabs so again classified into slabs again classified into sub slabs so all these have been created a confusion and uh, more uh, loopholes in the taxation system in india so so that's the reason why uh, to uh, to you know, this gst prevents the cascading effect or the tax on tax that would otherwise rise the be uh, increases the burden on the final consumer right so if you see the gst tax structure uh see uh, at the central level excise duty service tax and some other taxes have been covered under central gst vat luxury tax and some other taxes have been covered under state gst and along with central and say, state gst we have i gst that is integrated gst for the trade between the states okay interstate trade will be covered under i gst this is this is laid down by the central only okay so this igst is by not a tax itself it only a coordinating the between state and uh, federal taxes yeah as i said you it is see if you have so many taxes classified under so many slabs you will this will create loopholes this will create uh, confusion for the tax payer as well as tax collector that's the reason why in gst there are only four slabs 5% 12% 18% 28% that's it only four slabs mentioned in gst not no no more than four slabs okay so so on any product if you apply gst then it has to be either depending upon the category of the product it has to be either 5 or 12 or 18 or 28 shared between state and if it is 5% then sgst will be 2.5 cgst will be 2.5 if it is 12 6 and 6 18 9 and 9 28 14 and 14 that's it so the lowest slab is 5% highest slab is 28% okay moving on to the next topic that is hate speech in india so frequently we see the concept of hate speech in india in our news okay so this is uh, ever burning topics because some or other politician or some or other leader uh, either in print media or social media or either in any assembly uh, okay in outside assembly in open assemblies they will uh, their speeches might be hate speeches creating uh, hatred among the sections of the society 
और हेटेड एमोंग ए पर्टिकुलर रिलीजन और हेटेड एमोंग ए पर्टिकुलर कास्ट पर्टिकुलर जेंडर सो पर्टिकुलर रीजन सो ऑल दिस कम्स अंडर द हेट स्पीच सो इट इज़ अ एवर बर्निंग टॉपिक एंड इट इज़ ऑल्सो ए इश्यू अबाउट द इंटरनल सिक्योरिटी बिकॉज द इंटरनल सिक्योरिटी विल गेट विल बी इन डेंजर विल बी इन जियो पार्टी सिचुएशन वेन द हेट स्पीचेस इंक्रीजेस इन इंडिया दट इज द रीजन वाई एट स्पीचेस एट ऑल द लेवल्स हैव टू बी कर्ड वेन एट लोकल लेवल और द स्टेट लेवल और द नेशनल लेवल एट स्पीचेस मस्ट नेवर बी एनकरेज सो रीसेंटली केरला पॉलिटिशियन हैव बीन रीसेंटली अरेस्टेड ऑन द चार्जेस ऑफ एट स्पीचेस इफ यू सी वॉट इज द एट स्पीच देर आर डिफरेंट डेफिनेशन गिवन बाई द डिफरेंट ग्रुप्स सो इट इज नथिंग बट रिमार्क्स मेड टू इनसाइड द हेट रेड टूवर्ड्स ए स्पेसिफिक ग्रुप सो दैट ग्रुप मे बी रिलीजन कास्ट जेंडर और वॉट एवर रीजियन एज वेल सो so it read among a specific uh, towards a specific group such as a community or a religion or a race so this speech could be significantly or not but it will almost likely to result a bloodshed so which incites the violence in the society among the groups between the groups and at the same time the bureau of police research and development gave a definition on cyber uh, harassment like aids speech what is in case of cyber that is in case of social media also recently the aids speeches are increasing that's why this bureau of police research and uh, development gave a definition that is hate speech is defined as language that denigrates degrades or threatens or targets an individual based on their identity or other qualities such as sexual orientation or disability or their religion or whatever okay whatever their identification whatever their identification through their caste through their religion through their region through their disability through their uh, whatever that is uh, place of birth region so everything all these so if your language is denigrating or degrading or threatening or targeting a particular individual based on his identity on based these identity is based on certain qualities like Uh, gender or disabilities or religion or anything then it comes under the hate speech so this is the definition given by bprd next the law commission of india in its 27267th report gave one more definition for hate speech that is incitement of hatred directed primarily against a group of individuals based on race ethnicity gender sexual orientation religious beliefs and any other consideration okay this is the definition given by the law commission of india in 267th report so the context is very critical when deciding the hate speech is hate speech or not you talk something okay you talk something whether it is hate speech or not is decided by the context so context is more critical here so why because the main challenge is exploiting the concept of autonomy and free speech and how it hurts the a particular sector of society so whenever you have to understand what is this hate speech you must also understand article 191a because both seem to be opposite to each other here if you see we have freedom of speech and expression provided as a fundamental right in our constitution under article 19 class 1a that means we can speak we can express our views with the freedom okay from the whatever the punishment or whatever so we have our freedom to speak whatever we think whatever we thought whatever we uh, feel and also express our views without fear so with having uh, having complete freedom but however this article 191a have reasonable restrictions that means your speech or expression shall not disturb the law and order in the society shall not degrade any particular section of the society shall not create hatred among a particular uh, section of the society so these are the reasonable restrictions so, so by which we can say that the hate speech is also one of the restriction mentioned under article 19 class 1 class a so so that's why if you see uh, why why the hate speeches come into the picture when you when a particular group or a, when a particular individual has superiority complex about his class or group and seeing other classes and other groups of people with inferiority then he may means more chances are there for him to speak or to create hatred among the other groups 
okay so some people will have the preconceptions that their race their class their group their caste their religion is superior their gender is superior their sexual orient- orientation is superior this makes them feel that other classes are inferior and hence cannot have same rights as them okay same rights as them so that is one ground where the hate speeches can emerge and the other is stubbornness to specific ideology that means they follow only specific ideology other ideologies they will not they cannot tolerate they cannot uh, coexist peacefully with other ideologies that is the reason why again the chances for the hate speech will increase as about the stubbornness to the specific ideology if you see the yeah next coming to the legal status of the hate speech whatever law says if you see w- in, under indian penal code under ipc section 153 and 153b s- deals with the hatred and hostility between two communities as a punishable offense that means whatever the actions you did whether it is speech or whether it is whatever the action whatever you do if such action increases the hatred and hostility between any two communities then it comes under the punishable offense under section 153b and section 153a of ipc and also section 295a deals with if you, if you suppose intentionally and maliciously offend any particular religious sen- sentiments then it is also regarded as a criminal offense under section 295a of ipc okay here okay the difference is here any two communities any two communities here only particularly they mentioned if you your uh, action or you intentionally offend any particular religious sensitivities or sentiments then also it is a punishable offense under ipc section 295a and also it prohibits to publish or expose anything that may provoke or increase hate or violence among the population for example any action any news is there any particular information is there uh, then it has to be uh, it says that it must be prohibited under section 505 and 5051 class 1 and class 2 under ipc prohibits to publish or disseminate to expose such matter why because to avoid the violence to avoid the hatred among the people so if you expose them then you will be punishable under the uh sections of 505 and 505 class 1 and class 2 of ipc if a person convicted illegally that means he did not do the commit the crime but he was convicted illegally and exercising their right to freedom of speech such person is barred from contesting an election under the okay so if someone is arrested if someone is arrested the reason of his uh, arrest is he, he he spoke something he spoke something which is barred okay which is uh, contesting election under section 8 of person convicted of illegally exercising their right to okay is barred so if you exercise your right to freedom of speech illegally okay okay so if you are convicted on the ground that your freedom of speech is used illegally then you cannot contest the election under section 8 of representation of people act of 1951 okay so if you misuse your freedom of speech if you misuse your freedom of speech and use it illegally and if you are convicted for that then you are not eligible to contest the election and also under section 123 class 3a and 125 of representation of people's act makes it illegal to promote the hatred based on race religion community caste language during the elections yes so as you know the representation of people act of 1951 deals completely with the elections in india so it says that if your speech if your action promotes the hatred among races religions communities caste linguistic groups during the election and uh, it is considered as a corrupt electoral conduct and it is considered as a malpractice and your election will be nullified so under rpa so this is the legal status of the hate speech in india 
so hate speech has been banned under one that uh, is punishable offense under 153a and 153b of ipc section 295a of ipc sections 505 and 505 class 1 and 2 of ipc and also under rpa representation of people's act so sections 123 so section uh, 125 under R, so rpa representation of people act so in these many laws will deal with the hate speech concept so if you see under ipc vishwanathan committee proposed adding of one more section one two more sections to the ipc why to criminalize the hate speeches right to criminalize the hate speeches more more criminalizing the hate speech and also maximum punishment has to be two years and five thousand fine so as a maximum punishment is less than now two years he wanted to increase the maximum punishment to two years and also section 153c of ipc which deals with the uh, prejudice prejudice as is as we already discussed prejudice is uh, outcome of the superiority complex and stubbornness which is uh, so this if this act is done then it is a punishable offense for 5 years in prison and fine and both so at the same time section 509a using words gestures acts to insult a particular race also is a punishable offense up to 3 years so all these are proposed by besbrau committee so here we have two committees vishwanathan committee and besbrau committee they both suggested to increase the punishment mentioned in the ipc for the hate speech okay so if you are about to write a essay or an answer on hate speech please do mention vishwanathan committee and Besbarao committee and their recommendations according to uh, wherever it is you feel is it wherever you feel is necessary okay recent cases of hate speeches if you see in supreme court supreme court also stated that historical truths must be depicted in such a way not to create the hate speech okay the depiction must be healthy historical truths must be depicted healthy to create to increase the unity and integrity among the society but not to create the hate speeches and enmity or hostility among the society so that's what supreme court declared and recently very recent and if you see section 66a of id it is a very controversial section because the, under this particular section if you posted anything which in which creates the uh, posted on the internet anything which create the disturbance in the society then you will be arrested under section 66a of it act of 2000 which deals with the fundamental rights to free speech and expression guaranteed by article 119 plus the supreme court also decided in arub beyond versus state of assam that any single act could not be punished unless so culprit used violence or incited others to commit so uh, in order to say that uh, something is hate speech either culprit has used violence or something incited others to commit violence then only uh, it is a punishable offense and this committee s rangarajan and P. Jigjivan versus P. Jigjivan Ram. Uh, in this case, Supreme Court said that freedom of expression cannot be suppressed. So it gave importance more to the freedom of expression, more importance to the freedom of expression. So it said that in the name of hate speech, you cannot suppress the freedom of expression until and unless the situation is very dangerous. So if the situation is dangerous, then we can say or we can curb, we can suppress the freedom of speech until and unless you shall not suppress the freedom of speech given for the community or public interest or community interest even though the risk and the, the risk cannot be remote and speculative, right? So there should be a close and direct link between expression in an issue and expression in question, okay? right? So what were the steps taken till now and what are the steps to take? in the future most efficient way is the most efficient way is to reduce the enmity through our education our education system has to develop such that it has to create patriotism it has to create unity among the situations uh, societies and also it will uh, create uh, a peaceful 
settlement of any disputes means it must create a environment wherein students will enjoy yes, or students will understand and enjoy the importance of the unity and integrity okay so our educational system plays very crucial role in the development and understanding the compassion for others next the fight against the hate speech can't be carried out in vacuum so it must be an international and regional actors must be very active okay so a global fight has to be declared on these hate speeches given the situation in the global era okay and at the same time alternative dispute resolution must be encouraged to solve the cases on the hate speech very quickly without delay because the cases regarding hate speech were also being delayed because of so many reasons in courts so that's why alternative dispute resolution must be set up in order to deal with hate speech cases okay so settlement of the cases will be done very uh, fast and through negotiation mediation arbitration and conciliation different process under alternative dispute resolution so that is negotiation mediation arbitration and conciliation these are the four major types of alternate dispute resolution so next public officials must also be held accountable that means if in any area hate speech is creating hatred and resulted in the communal clashes or as resulted in some clashes then the local government officials must be kept at responsibility because it is their duty to provide the citizens an order okay okay coming to the next major topic that is the topic of the day wheat cultivation in india so so the context is <coughs> the i mean rising demands in the market the wheat farmers yeah wheat farmers uh, in the madhya pradesh are preferring to sell uh, private mandis to sell in the private mandis rather than going for the government procurement so they are not giving their wheat they are not selling their wheat to the government rather they are preferring to sell in the private mandis so why because as there is more increase in the demand of the wheat in the market so they are uh, approaching the private mandis because they are uh, there they are getting good amount of returns so if you see uh, what's the reason why the demand has been increased for the wheat the reason is the russian and ukraine war why because the russia is the topmost producer of the wheat in the world russia is the world's leading producer of the wheat so and at the same time ukraine is also one of the leading producer so more than fifth means more than fifth one fifth of the world's wheat is exported by russia and ukraine only that's the reason so the demand for the wheat has been increased because of the lower production in both russia and ukraine we as uh, because of the effect of the war so russia and ukraine exported almost about quarter of the world's wheat in 2019 so almost 25 percent in 2019 which is a very high amount of exposure Uh, exporting so if you see world's highest exporter in uh, wheat 18% of the global exports are done by russia alone so together like russia us canada france and ukraine are the top 5 wheat exporters i am talking top 5 wheat exporters do remember don't confuse between wheat exporters and wheat producers wheat producers see india is the second largest producer but we won't export india is the second largest producer but we won't export much our export is only 0.54% in 2020 when you compare it to the total world russia is 18% ours is only 0.5% why russia produces more and at the same time exports more we produces more but we eat more that is we consume it domestically okay we don't export so so because of the war of russia and ukraine the production in russia and ukraine decreased which increased the demand for wheat globally okay so why because the countries like turkey and other countries around the these uh, ukraine and uh, russia are suffering because of the because they depend more on the imports about this wheat for example india see india produces 1075.59 metric tons metric tons so which is nothing but 13.5% 13.5% of the total output that's why it is second largest 
but at the same time we consume majority domestically we export only 0.5% so a central we india we in india we have central pool of 24.2 million tons which is more than twice the buffer and strategic requirements that means we are self sufficient not only self sufficient more than self sufficient in the wheat buffer stock okay because india government has 24.2 million tons with it so if you see about the wheat it is the second significant cereal crop after the rice and it is main food crop for the northern northwestern regions what are the states particularly uttar pradesh punjab haryana madhya pradesh rajasthan bihar and gujarat so north and northwestern country uh, produces lot amount of wheat particularly up tops in the production next follows by the punjab so and at the same time do remember that the wheat is a major rabi crop rabi crops means the winter crops so rabi crops is a winter crops which requires like wheat requires 10 to 15 degrees celsius sowing period 21 to 26 ripening and harvesting period temperatures so which is exactly matching towards the rabi season so that's the reason why it is a wheat is a major rabi crop that to in north and northwestern india so they require rainfall of 75 to 100 cm and fertile loamy and clay loamy soils with good drainage will give a good yield for example you know this 75 to 100 cm are provided to these states by the uh, westerly winds from the mediterranean sea so in the rabi season and at the same time green revolution also increased helped to increase the wheat production in india so several macro management mode of agriculture national food security mission and rashtriya krishi vikas yojana are some of the government uh, initiatives in order to increase the wheat production right so if you see uh, this this question may be asked either in mains or prelims so for prelims facts are more important for mains if they ask you to analyze the causes for the increase of the wheat production do mention that the green revolution and some of the government initiatives are also reason for the increase of the wheat production in india okay along with the favorable temperature and rainfalls next coming to the fourth news that is about the portable device to convert sea water into the drinking water so if you see yeah we sea water which is a salt water is not uh, edible we cannot drink it so whereas the drinking water to convert it into drinking water we have to filter it we have to filter okay we have to remove all the salts from the water we have to make it as pure as possible in order to drink now this massachusetts institute of technology mit now it it in uh, it made a portable device okay this institute made a portable device portable desalination machine so it will desalinate mean remove or removes all the salts from the water so the weight of this machine is less than 10 kg it can be easily carried to any place to any remote places so they say means the manufacturer that is this mit claims that this device is uh, just uh, i'll show you the picture first of all Yeah, this is the device, a small device designed by MIT. So it is a size of suitcase. Okay, so it uses electricity in order to desalinize the water. And one biggest advantage for this is the water will not pass through the machine. Okay, the water will not pass through the machine. Instead, water will not pass through the machine. So that is the biggest advantage. why because if water passes through the machine then it will create the disturbance means uh, filters have to be frequently changed so that is not there in this machine so they claim that this device is a size of suitcase uses very less energy than a cell phone charger so a small portable solar panel is enough in order to run this machine okay so this is one thing and one good advantage that is low energy low energy and uh, a solar panel is enough so even in the mid of the ocean also just just a solar panel is enough to supply the energy for this machine according to the manufacturer they also claim that drinking water quality the quality is almost more than the who quality quite criteria that means good amount of filtration has been done by pressing a single button 
so yeah earlier before this invention earlier all the machines portable desalination machines required water to pass through the filters but this device remove the particulates by using the electricity so there is no requirement of the water to pass through the filters so the concept of frequently changing the filters is not required long term maintenance why because it eliminated the need for replacement of filters and also this will allow even uh, in distant areas with minimum resources because it is easily portable we can carry it anywhere just less than 10 kg and minimal resources because only uh, one or two solar panels solar panels are enough to supply the energy so it will be helpful for the refugees who are fleeing the natural disasters and soldiers on their long term military missions where the drinking water can be easily taken from the particularly for the navy okay who are moving on the oceans right so this is all about the portable device to convert the sea water into the drinking water next coming to the eco eco adventure tourism park in delhi so this has been constructed recently uh, in delhi and will be open to the public okay on wednesday so will be open to the public on wednesday so it is a 16 acre park size known as haritima okay known as haritima haritma haritma known as haritma so so a green greenery is developed and it creates the village environment so if guest visits this then they won't feel that they are in delhi instead they feel that they are in some rural areas so they want to give the taste of rural life to the people of delhi that's the reason why government has uh, established this eco adventure tourism park and uh, where is it it is in najabgarh of southwest delhi so night tourism and provide delhi has a countryside expenditure uh, experience sorry a countryside experience that is a kind of village experience okay and also they are providing the staying facility so staycation that means they can take the rooms and they can stay there okay so almost 20 cottages are provided like this so if you see yeah so this is the tourism eco tourism adventure tourism developed in delhi okay right so this is all for today thank you